Okay, good morning, Clay. Uh, we'll turn it over to you for some opening comments. All righty. Good morning, everybody. Um, to start off with, before we get into our football team, congratulations uh, to Elijah Barrett Tucker. Uh, so happy for him uh, and his family uh, to have a chance to talk with him uh, last night and his family last night to see the joy. Uh, what a great story uh, and what a great Trojan. Uh, appreciate everything he's accomplished here, everything he's done for us. Uh, we've got six other draft eligible players that we're looking forward to seeing where they land on NFL teams coming up uh, over the next couple of days. Uh, but uh, some really good Trojans getting ready to make their next step uh, and play on Sundays. And we look forward to seeing where they land and wish them all the best of luck and thank them for what they've done here. Um, you know, it's been a great 13 weeks. Uh, it really has. Um, I, and I thank our players. Uh, I thank our coaching staff. Uh, I thank this university, um, uh, especially our, med our, our medical staff, um, for helping us guide us through eight weeks of strength and conditioning program, five weeks of training camp. Uh, you know, uh, doing daily testing every day and being right there along our side. Uh, you know, it, it's really been um, a commitment by a lot of folks uh, to propel our team forward over the last 13-week uh, cycle, this spring cycle. And we've got a lot accomplished. Um, we've learned a lot, but we've also accomplished a lot in my mind. Uh, and the first one is, is as far as, as learning, um, really coming out of this camp, have learned that there's several young big men uh, that are going to help us contribute uh, next year um, in some role fashion. Um, I, I think about the young defensive linemen with Jamar Sakona uh, and Stanley uh, and, and Jay Toya uh, and, and some guys that are coming back uh, like Jay Clickenstein and what they're going to be able to allow to, to do for us, even Dejan Benton uh, moving forward uh, and doing a nice job this spring. Offensive line-wise, to see a Jonah Meinheim and a Corlin Ford progress, uh, a Justin Dietrich progress, um, a Casey Collier uh, really come on. Um, there's going to be several. We've become deeper uh, at that big man position uh, and really uh, have enjoyed watching them grow. Uh, the next thing uh, learned was, you know, to see our running back room. Uh, and the depth and talent that's going to be in there for the 2021 season. It's a bunch of veterans in, in that room this year, uh, and to see them work uh, and to see what they can bring to the table has actually uh, done a little bit with personnel groupings, which I'll talk about here in just a second. But, it, you know, there is depth and talent in that room uh, and uh, is going to help us for next year. Uh, the, the last thing we probably learned, um, which was neat to see, is we made a commitment to, you know, kind of move Drake outside, Drake London outside, and see um, see his versatility. Uh, and what we found out is he's just as good outside as he is inside, which I think is going to make him an even bigger weapon to be able to move him around where people can't find exactly where he's at. Um, it was great to see him with his big play capability uh, over and over and over and over again in camp. Um, you know, what we got done uh, in this training camp, um, I thought we really progressed two young quarterbacks. Uh, obviously, I'm thanking God we still got 25 more practices. But to be able to watch these 15 practices and watch them grow, watch them go through some growing pains, be coachable and learn from mistakes is great to see. Um, you know, I thought the young DBs that we brought in, especially at the safety position, this camp has really helped them. It's progressed to Chase Williams. Uh, a ton into a, a, a dynamic leader. We all know Isaiah Polamau, but to be able to get a, a, a Xavion and a Zamarian uh, a, and Anthony Beavers uh, a, and a Kalen Bullock to really have 15 practices with them and grow them, um, I thought was exceptional. Um, you know, we got to introduce some new schemes uh, and some new personnel groupings, like I talked about, because of the backs and uh, and, and what they're bringing to the table. And we, we introduced some, some new schemes that I think offensively and defensively that are going to help us for next year. And then I, the really neat thing that uh, I see just being a head coach and being able to step back was it was really neat to be able to have the opportunity for T.O. and Dante Williams and Craig Niver and Vic Soto kind of – blend their personality and give their personality to the defense. They didn't get that last year with a spring and a, an abbreviated fall camp, but to really that tough, edgy, uh, aggressive, always attacking mindset 
has really rubbed off on our defense. So it's been a great 13 weeks. Um, where do we go from here? Uh, this is our last practice today. We look forward to seeing y'all this afternoon. Uh, and then the next two weeks, obviously, we start finals uh, uh, over the next two weeks. Um, we'll have a discretionary period the last two weeks of, uh, of May. And then our summer access be begins June 1st, and we start a new eight-week cycle with our players leading up to training camp. So um, a lot has been accomplished, been a lot of fun. Uh, to be honest with you, be around this group. There's a great vibe uh, around our team right now. It's fun to be around them uh, and to see how much they like each other and how much they like competing against each other. It's been a great spring. So with that, I'll take any questions that you got. Okay, thank you, Clay. Uh, let's start with uh, Ryan Young. Good morning, Clay. Good morning, Ryan. Uh, so going back to the young quarterbacks, uh, what you've seen so far, and obviously you already mentioned that you have more practice time in August to evaluate, but how would you assess where things stand with that number two quarterback job? Uh, it stands as both of them are progressing, and thank goodness for 40 practices. We're 15 in. We'll do 25 more practices, and the best player in the moment uh, will will end up taking that that spot. You know, but like I told them and I told you all guys early in this camp, I don't want them looking over their shoulder and saying, you know, where am I right now? Or how many reps did I get today? You know, I, I ran with the ones today or the twos today or the threes today. You know, let's just progress. Let's let's dive into this system. Let's get comfortable in this system. Let's make the mistakes and learn from them. And we've done that for 14 practices today, 15. Um, and I love I, I love how both quarterbacks uh, have really showed their strengths and really grown in some areas of growth that they needed to. Um, for Jackson, uh, you can see his creativity. Uh, you can see his deep ball accuracy, his ability to create on the move. Uh, and, and in Miller's case, man, it's just been precision about going and being able to make, make his reads, going through progression, delivering accurate balls time after time, getting the ball out. Um, I, have they made mistakes? Yes. And the, they're young quarterbacks that should still be at high school, be in prom right now. But it, it's – for both these two kids, I thought they took the right approach is every time that I go out there, I, I'm not competing against the other guy. I'm trying to be the best version of myself. If I'm competing against anybody, I want, I'm trying to live up to the standard of where Keaton's at and trying to be the best quarterback on this football team. And I thought they took that approach uh, this spring. And that's the same mindset I wanted to take early in camp as we start evaluating and competing and getting towards that uh, 40th practice. And then that Friday, I'll let you know who's the best player in the moment. Good deal. And then a few injury updates. Uh, Liam Jimmins, and then we didn't see Brim McCoy out there on Tuesday. And Drake Jackson's missed a few practices. Yeah, um, you know, Liam Jimmins uh, in our last scrimmage suffered a little bit of a high ankle uh, that's limited him. Um, Brew uh, aggravated a little bit of a hamstring. Uh, and then we've just been really cautious with Drake. You, you know, I know it was reported uh, the car accident uh, that a couple of our kids were in, um, just making sure he's gone through concussion protocol uh, and just we're being ultra safe there. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Antonio. Clay, along those lines, can you update us on Josh Jackson and, and Michael Jackson? Yeah, uh, Michael, as we know, it's we've we've put the ball down as the maximum number of times that you can in tackling situations um, in, in this camp. It's been a very physical camp. And, you know, Michael was one of those that uh, was just uh, as big bodies fell. He got a big body on, <laughs> that fell on his ankle, uh, but he, he's doing fine. He's got a little high ankle sprain. Um, you know, if he was a big man, he probably would be back now, but he's a wide out that has to put his foot in the ground. And it's just a different position. Um, so uh, we, I, I wish we had another week at camp. He'd probably be close to being back next week. Uh, but uh, right now he's, he's going through that. And, and who was the other one, Antonio, you said? Josh Jackson. Yeah, uh, Josh uh, had just uh, uh, just illness, um, uh, nothing dealing with COVID, but just wasn't feeling good. And uh, he was actually back with us yesterday, to be honest with you. For sure. And what did you feel like you learned about some of your newcomers, the 14 guys who enrolled early uh, this spring? Yeah, I, I, I'll be honest with you, Antonio. I, I really liked their sense of urgency 
to be great. You know, they didn't take the approach, oh, I'm in college now. Let me enjoy college. Let me enjoy all the things that come with college independence. They dove right in. You know, they dove in uh, to the workouts. We, we acclimated them to the older guys extremely quickly uh, in the spring and, and got them with our, our older veterans right off the bat. And they jumped right in, learned from them, were humble, were respectful, and they were hungry. Uh, and they had a sense of urgency to really learn uh, and put themselves in a position to contribute next year. I, I think it's been a, an unbelievable uh, 13 weeks for those kids. And it really put themselves uh, in, in a great position to help us next year. Now it's our challenge as coaches. you got 13 more coming June 1st uh, and the opportunity to really grow that crew. Uh, over, you know, over an eight week cycle over the summer when we are allowed to do uh, strength and conditioning with those guys, we are allowed to, you know, have our have position meetings with them and, and grow. Uh, and obviously we'll have some of our player run practices over the summer, which will allow them to advance. Our goal is to have those 27 kids where, you know, when they when they come in to fall camp, they're not learning they're competing, you know, and so that's our challenge. We're, we're way ahead with the 14. The next 13 that walk in here, we've got, we have to have a sense of urgency as a coaching staff to really advance them, especially in the month of June. Okay, Ryan Karchi. Hey, Clay, I know you mentioned being impressed with what you've seen from the offensive line, especially the, the young linemen, but it, it seemed like you went with a, a similar group of five to start spring. And then I know you shuffled it up uh, these mm -hmm. last couple of weeks. Yeah. Do you guys feel like you are closer at this point to knowing who that starting five is, or do you plan to come into the fall with that being completely wide open? Yeah, it, it's, everybody's going to have to earn a job. Cause I, you know, we, again, we're going to play the best kids that are in the moment. And, you know, I, to be able to see a, a Cortland Ford really progress, you know, a Justin Dietich really progress, um, a Casey Collier and Jonah Monheim, who's had maybe the Jonah may had the best camp of anybody uh, on our football team. Um, you know, to see those young linemen, we'll, we'll be in a great situation coming into fall camp because those kids are going to compete and they understand, you know, there's injuries that, that happen. There, there's competitions that happen. And, and you've got 25 practices over a four week period of time to really build your resume and say, why should you be the starter in that opening game? And we're going to give those kids the opportunity. We're truly blessed to have some veterans that are in there too. I, I think about a Jalen McKenzie and I think about a Liam Jimmins who's had a good camp up until, you know, the, uh, um, up until the ankle injury, uh, a, um, a Brett Nealon and an Andrew Voorhees. So that mixture of veteran leadership and guys that have played a lot of ball can, combined with this young, youthful talent that is really influxed in here uh, and come on with us, gosh almighty, it makes for a great setup, um, not only for the present, but for the future. Uh, and, you know, our kids understand that it's about competing and the best go player goes out there and plays doesn't matter where you're from doesn't matter your age it's who's the best in the moment and that could be by your performance it could be by injury that's why we wait all the way up until that last friday to produce it too deep um, because you just don't know where you're going to be until that time do you feel like that shuffling this last couple of weeks has kind of opened your your eyes to maybe some potential different combinations oh definitely Without question, you know, we, we, it's all about trying to find, you know, where the, find the best five and then where the best five fit. And, and what a great example, you know, Elijah Bear Tucker, he goes from a left guard, you know, in his third year uh, and, and he's, he's sitting right beside Austin Jackson. And that was the best lineup for us at that time. And then what was it last year? Well, Elijah just happened to be the best lineman on the football team and the best left tackle on the football team at that time, while we had some very young players that were true freshmen that didn't have any camp. You know, we had signed five freshmen, but they didn't get a spring. They didn't get spring winter conditioning. They didn't get a training camp. They got abbreviated fall and they were thrust. They just weren't ready uh, at, at that point in time. So to be able to have Elijah go out there with a mixture of Andrew Voorhees, Brett Neal, and uh, Liam Jimmins that came on, and Jalen McKenzie, that, that those were guys that really – uh, it did a tremendous job for us. But I think Elijah was the greatest example is, is, you know, it's where you fit best in the moment for our football team. Um, and that's why when you see us recruit, 
you see all those kids that I've, uh, that I've mentioned other than Brett and, and Justin Dietrich, what did they play in high school? They all were tackles in high school. Every one of them were tackles. We signed tackle athletic bodies that, that then can come in and, and be able to move around. So um, it's, it, it's been a great camp to, just like you say, Ryan, uh, to identify that, yes, these young kids are ready to compete and ready to contribute. Okay, let's go to uh, Adam Grossbard. Clay, after getting a feel for the roster during spring, are there any position groups that you feel like you might need to supplement, whether depth-wise or just looking for, you know, someone else to help out at during in the transfer portal? Uh, you know, right now we've got a couple spots left. Uh, we do have a couple spots left. Um, I, you know, one of the things I'm looking forward to just positionally um, uh, to provide some depth with that we already have, we've already signed. Uh, I'm looking forward to get a, 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 a Sierra Wright here and a Prophet Brown here and a Jalen Smith here and, and really bolster uh, the defensive backcourt, especially at the corner position and nickel position. Um, you, you know, having to having Greg coming off of surgery, uh, unfortunately losing Max, you know, that had us shuffle around uh, where Isaiah Polamalu had to come down and Bam had to come down uh, and play that nickel position. You know, to, uh, to have three additional DBs uh, that are coming uh, coming to us over the summer uh, with Sierra Prophet and, and Jalen, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I really am. So that 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 additional uh, that additional help at the corner and nickel position uh, is something that uh, we look forward to. Isaiah seemed very disruptive, especially in pass rush situations out of the nickel position. Could you see him being a long-term fit at that position? Well, again, it, the beauty of the beauty of To's defense is you have this kind of three-spoke system between the you know kind of the boundary safety, the field safety, and the nickel. And, and as you saw last year, they can rotate anywhere to be a, a, a flat zone player, a post player, a box player. You have to be able to do that at all three positions. And Isaiah, and you saw it with Talanoa, um, really did a tremendous job of that. When they had to be in the post, they did a great job. When they had to be in the box, they did a great job. When they had to be out in space, and I thought that's where Talanoa thrived. It's been neat to see. Uh, Isaiah thrives, you know, out in space and coming off the edge and pressuring uh, and doing and doing those things. So, yes, he's a definite candidate. Uh, it, it's going to be neat to have these 25 extra practices to watch the young safeties come along, as well as, uh, and, I, and I'll say this, and I said this, I think maybe a, a meeting ago, you know, Chase Williams has had, he, he's one of those candidates for, you know, having one of the best camps. Uh, he has been so consistent uh, and really has upped his physicality uh, as a guy that comes in the box and making big plays. You know, we, uh, I know you saw last uh, Saturday uh, when we were scrimmaging, he met, he met Keontae Agram in the hole one-on-one -on, -one on the goal line. And, and, you know, that's not an easy task when you've got a 227 pound man, but I mean, he came in with no hesitation, tremendous physicality and stops him just short of the goal line in a one-on-one -on -one tackle situation, which really uh, opened my eyes. I was like, wow, he, you know, I know Chase for his athleticism. What I, what I loved this spring was his physicality that he brought kind of like Talanoa brought that. So I think we got some good candidates in that three spoke system. Um, you know, I look forward to getting these young players continued progression as well as these news players in to find our best setup uh, between those three, but it's neat to see Isaiah in a pinch could, he could play them all. He could be boundary safety, field safety, nickel. He has, he has every skill set you want. You'd like to clone him and have two more of them and you'd be, you'd be perfect. Okay, uh, let's go to Eric McKinney. Uh, Clay, what's been your takeaway from, from the inside linebacker position this spring and, and the guys going there? Yeah, you, you know, you can see the consistency and, and kind of the veteran experience now that a Kanai and Raylan have. Um, you know, I thought they played extremely consistent this spring. Um, uh, it's been fun watching them. Uh, I think they've established themselves as – to the leaders uh, of our defense, um, it, but it's also been fun to watch some some guys continue to grow at the grow at the position. Raymond Scott, uh, I it, it even improved from 
you know, last fall when he was thrust in there because of numbers uh, and did a nice job for us. He's grown uh, at, at the position. It's been neat to see Julian Simon, who's been coached probably harder maybe than anybody on our team by T.O. Uh, there, there has been uh, some tough love moments, but it's really allowed him to grow. Uh, and um, and he's take takes coaching. So, you know, I, I look forward, you, you know, you got a Ray John Davis that's, that's getting ready to come on, come on with us also, uh, which will bolster that group too. But it's been a good spring for that. I, obviously a T.O. led bunch is going to be, one of the leaders uh, of your of your defense, and and uh, I think Raylan Kanai and and that group have really been solid uh, and done a nice job this spring. And I know scholarship numbers are always kind of that inexact science of, of how many you have in, in any year, but with the extra year of eligibility, with the one time transfer thing, what what kind of challenges is that going to present, and and what sort of plan has to be in place for for knowing you know, how many kids you can go after in, in any class? Yeah, you know, one of the things that I, I think we'll always have here, and you saw it this year, is because of the nature of the talent that we have on our team, you're going to have NFL attrition. Uh, you're also, I think everybody, you've seen it all, the, all around the country, uh, you're going to have some uh, transfer attrition. Um, so the numbers uh, will equal out. You know, we're in a great spot right now for the 21 season. Uh, we're looking, uh, you know, forward to signing a great 22 class. Um, but I, I think Spencer Harris and our personnel department, as well as you know, our just management uh, of our numbers, as well as the guys we brought in from both freshmen, as well as some talented, uh, taking some talented free agents out of that transfer portal that are going to help us. I mean, I think of a Katie Nixon, 103, uh, 103 catches in his career, Keontae Ingram, a 2000, 2000 yard rusher, a talented Xavier Alford uh, that, that's, that's coming in, in into play for us. I can't wait you know, to watch Big Ish, you know, he's, he's starting to walk around here, prance around here and, and you're like, God, buddy, I can't wait to get, get you on the field. But I think we've done a nice job of combining very talented youth with a couple veteran leaders uh, that can really make a difference for us. Um, I think that, 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 you know, one-time transfer portal has kind of created now almost like an NFL free agent market. You know, I think about when uh, a couple of years ago, you remember Les Snead making the great moves to get Adamic and Sue and Marcus Peters and to leave that one year. And what did it transfer to? It transferred to from a playoff team that now they were in the Super Bowl. Um, and those are kind of some of the things that you can do as a head coach in a university is be able to say, hey, here's all this young talent we signed. Now where are maybe there are some deficiencies uh, because of NFL, uh, maybe because of in, in, in NFL attrition, maybe because of injury, maybe because of, of transfer, you know, where can you help yourself, uh, you know, in three, four positions. Um, so I think that is going to be consistent, I think, with everybody across the country, uh, that when there's those opportunities arise and you can help yourself with a talented player, uh, you're probably going to take that opportunity. I know we have a lot of hands raised, but we only have time for uh, one more. Let's go to uh, Keely. Hey, Clay, I was just wondering, um, how would you evaluate the spring camp that Keaton Slovis has had? And is he where you expected him to be at this point in camp? Yeah, Keely, you, you know what I've been really impressed um, with uh, Keaton is, and I said this the other day, and it happened again Thursday, to be honest with you, is just his situational mastery. Um, you know, what he's been able to show in a two minute situation, a four minute situation, the decisions that he made. We were in a tight red zone situation uh, ye uh, yesterday that we put the guys in and, and him not forcing the issue on a on a second or third down, knowing he's going to get a fourth. He's just progressing, uh, I really think, in his decision making uh, and and, you know, putting himself in those situations and executing them right. And then, you know. I remember this was Sam that I thought he did a good job and Keaton's doing this right now. Sam was the best I'd ever been around about one-on-one -on -one relationships. He was an extremely vocal guy to a huge bunch, but gosh almighty, he could do an unbelievable job of walking up to Juju Smith-Schuster and be able to have that conversation and say, hey, this is what I need. And I'm starting to see that from Keaton. You know, he's having those conversations about as soon as as soon as a, a series is done, he's walking up to a to a, kid, a young kid 
like a Michael Jackson and say, hey, come here, I, let, let's get on the same page here. Let me tell you what I'm thinking. You know, and, and so I'm, I'm starting to watch those conversations as a young person didn't happen too much. He was just trying to try to do his job. But now he's helping others. And that leadership and that growth uh, has really helped our football team this spring. Uh, you know, and so I think he's got total awareness of the system now. He knows exactly what Graham wants. Uh, he's making better decisions in, in, in special situational mastery. And I've loved his leadership. Especially, it doesn't have to be the boisterous voice that you hear every day. It's just those one-on-one -on -one conversations that he's doing a really nice job with with our team. So I hope that answered the question, Keith. And then injury-wise, do you anticipate anyone having an injury that will bleed into fall camp? Um, you know, we had a couple uh, major injuries, unfortunately, and it's the nature of football. You go through a five-week physical camp, there's going to be a couple that, that come out. Um, obviously, Mo Hassan had a very successful AC, ACL surgery on just a freak, you know, on air cut that, that led to, led to a, a knee injury. Uh, you have um, Brandon Peely, uh, you, you know, that uh, uh, had uh, an ACL. Uh, uh, an ACL surgery and a, and a Max Williams uh, that had uh, had to have excuse me uh, uh, Max Williams who had ACL so you know those three are the ones that stand out to me I don't see any others at this point some of them pulled pulled us out for this camp uh, but I, I expect everybody to be back come June to go through that eight week cycle uh, and be ready for fall camp but those were the three uh, in this camp uh, that got us. Okay, uh, Clay, thank you very much for uh, joining us today and, and for doing it all, all spring long. And, and media, thank you guys for, for being with us all spring. Um, a reminder that we do have a, a, our final practice this afternoon uh, open for media viewing. We will let media in at 325, so uh, be there on time there. Uh, and just two dates for your calendar. These are still very tentative, but just for your planning, uh, Pac-12 Football Media Day uh, is uh, being looked at the last week of July in Los Angeles. Uh, when we get more details, we'll let you know. And very tentative start of uh, camp uh, for uh, USC would be uh, August 6th. So just for your, your planning, you can uh, get your you know, calendars going that way. So with that, uh, Clay and, and media, thank you for being here and uh, have a great day. Thank you for covering us this spring, guys. Good luck. Take care.